in a way, this, this works for the French. They've, with their, their places, Champagne and Chablis and Saint-Emilion and Chateauneuf-de-Pape, it works. I mean, for example, Pomerol, if all Pomerol had just Merlot written on the label, people would associate it with, well, let's face it, cheap Merlot. So I think they've done a pretty good job at identifying places rather than generic grape varieties. Why is this important? Well, the French think that if you buy a bottle of Chablis, it should taste like Chablis, and it's got to be made of Chardonnay. That's the rules. If you buy a bottle of Bordeaux, it's going to be made with these certain grape varieties. If you buy a bottle of Red Burgundy, it's made with Pinot Noir, and it's going to taste of Red Burgundy. And no one is allowed to do anything different. So, the Appalachian control system, is it frustrating? Yes, it can be very frustrating. I understand, actually, it's quite useful to work within a certain set of guidelines. What are the varieties that we're allowed to plant? How we're allowed to, to, to plant them? How much wine we can make from any chosen hectare and so on? All these things are important and the French do love rules. They also like breaking them, of course. Uh, rules are important. I think the frustrating thing for me, probably based on the last few years, is we're not allowed to irrigate the vines. Sauvignon Blanc, for example, in New Zealand, in Marlborough, it's all irrigated. Here, we have to rely on the weather. We have to rely on what rainfall and sunshine all at the right time. So it can be a bit frustrating when you see the vines suffering and they're in need of irrigation. We're not allowed to water, and that's a bit of a problem here.